So here's a brief overview of the kind of characteristics and disciplines that you need as a successful trader. This video covers the first aspect of the three M's in trading, namely your mindset. And of course I'm covering this topic first because trading is 60% psychology, 25% money management, and only about 15% method. Most of the are made up on the spot, which is my little joke. But the point is that the method or the system is important, but trading emotionally and without money management can create more damage than any good that the right system can do. You can have the best system, and you can still lose money if you don't have the mindset for trading. So what are your expectations as a trader? Are you looking for the highest returns in the shortest space of time and at the lowest level of risk? Well, don't we all? The truth is that trading is not easy. Trading offers high returns, but it also comes with high volatility and high risk. There are times when you're going to feel frustrated and unsure of yourself. There may be times when you might even swear or shout, but eventually, as you develop the right mindset, you'll be calm about your trading. So dealing with the psychological aspects of handling losses is the reason that many people prefer to simply hand their money over to someone else. So trading on your own is very different from handing your money over to a fund manager because you have to learn to take complete responsibility. Complete responsibility means closing the door to excuses. means you can't trade like a cowboy or you're going to have to realize that only you are to blame for a loss. Not markets, not your CFT provider, not the economy, not other traders and certainly not me. Mistakes and losses are going to happen, but they're not the end of the world. It's how you react to them that makes the difference. The chances are that you probably will make mistakes when you first trade. Some mistakes might be costly, but take responsibility and learn from them. The point is, it isn't that why you're interested in trading instead of handing your money over to someone else. If you find yourself in a losing trade, you should ask yourself, well, did I follow the rules? Because 99% of unsuccessful trades are because the rules were simply not followed. So like it or not, only you are to blame for unsuccessful trading. So take complete responsibility. Or rather go find a fund manager and be happy with those lower returns and the higher fees. So if you do make a poor trade, don't rush in with another trade to try and make up for your loss. Rather go back to the rules. Be patient you will recover that loss. Successful traders trust the system or the method. They have complete confidence in the system and the rules of trading. Successful traders never have to ask anyone else's opinion on a trade. They follow their system. That's basically why I hate traders forums. If you have to ask someone else's opinion, then you don't have a system and you shouldn't be trading. The fact of life is that most people are influenced by what others think. We tend to follow the consensus. And everyone can be wrong, but we feel more comfortable following the crowd. Right now, I've been reading forum posts from numerous traders who continue to pay margin calls on long positions. They furthermore try and encourage other traders to go long on these poor calls. Why on earth would you consider listening to anyone else who's trading against the trend based on uneducated guessing? Like anything in life, you get what you focus on. So what is going on in your mind right now? What is going on is going to really determine what you will do. In fact, you might have avoided trading up to now because you link losing money to trading. We avoid things that we link to pain. This is simply how our thinking works. However, there is good and bad in everything. The truth is that 95% of traders do lose money. The other 5% make off like bandits, earning triple digit returns or at least double, year in and year out. Your reaction to trading will depend on where you focus your attention. Focus on the unsuccessful traders and you're probably going to avoid trading. But look into what makes the 5% so successful and you're going to get excited about trading. You move toward things that you link to pleasure. Making loads of money through trading is really a lot of fun. If all you see is the risk, then you're really focusing on the pain. This is going to hinder your success. If you're a glass half empty type of person, then the trick is not only to link pleasure with trading, but to link more pain with not trading. 
than with actually doing it. The cost of getting average returns on your money as opposed to triple digit growth can become very painful when you find yourself needing to carry on working until late in life instead of retiring early and retiring rich. I spent a large part of my working life as a portfolio manager and the goal was achieving risk adjusted returns. You had to manage volatility and simply try and get slightly more than the overall market. There were years when the overall market was actually making losses. As long as my client's losses were lower than the markets, my bonus was safe. The trading can be very volatile. You can lose a lot of money in a short period of time. I don't want to take on the risk and invest with the rest of the crowd. Well, then you should get average returns. Most people only do something when things get bad enough. Many people have taken to trading because things were more painful elsewhere. I know a successful forex trader who could not find a job and so he started trading with his last 2,000 rand. And thank goodness he took the risk. So think about what you will miss out on if you don't trade. Really think about that. Are you going to be happy staying in your current job, earning what you've been used to earning, and investing in products with poor returns managed by fund managers who drive the car you dream of and live in the house that you covered? Many who start trading have the belief system that, well, it's probably not going to go well. But they think, well, let me give it a dabble anyway. They may even say, well, what have I got to lose? if I attend a training course or I try trading for a few weeks. I start the process with this negative belief system and not fully committed from the beginning. So the actions they take are therefore minimal and half-hearted because they really believe they're not going to succeed at this. At best, they're skeptical. Is there any surprise that the results that come out of this process which starts with a negative belief will be tiny? They get what they expect to get, which is very little. So, this just reinforces the original belief they had, which was that trading does not work. Because you never get more than your thoughts. You always get what you expect. Isn't that true? So, if you think that you're going to fail, you probably will. If you think you're going to succeed, well, you probably will. The realms of possibility are created within the walls of your belief. If I told you that it's possible to turn 10,000 Rand into 1 million, would you think it possible? If I told you that over five years you could turn 10,000 into 100,000, and over the next five years turn 100,000 into a million, would you think it possible? What if I told you that um, that is possible? Maybe you believe that over 10 years it can be done. How much do you think you need to earn per month to make that possible? Not 10%, not even 5%. In fact, it only requires around 3.7% compounded monthly, and after 120 months, your 10,000 would have grown to 1 million rand. Now, many could see the possibility of that. However, if I told you that many traders earn far more than 3.7% on average per week, would you believe it possible to turn 10,000 rand into 1 million in 2 years and 2 months, which is basically 120 weeks? What if it were possible? What if your belief system is just holding you back? From that possibility. But not to create the wrong impression. A 3.7% weekly average doesn't mean that um, it's consistent. Some weeks you could be earning 30%, which is then followed by three or four losing weeks in a row. I met with a professional trader a few weeks back. It's not uncommon for him to make 10% on average a week, trading just one index instrument. The day I met with him, he was down by 11%. If you're currently not making more from your investments than you are from your daily job, there's a very good chance that you hold that negative belief that it's not possible to get winning averages of 3.7% per week because of the one or two negative experiences that you've had with trading. A professional trader does not let the 11% loss hold him back. He just carries on trading the same instrument just until he knows that over time it's a winning game. Maybe... You don't have the risk tolerance for 11% per day loss, so that's fine. You probably don't need to be chasing 10% per week anyway. Maybe with your risk tolerance you struggle with 3.7% per month, and you would be ecstatic to turn 10,000 Rand into 1 million over 10 years. It all begins with your belief. The reason that 95% of traders fail is mostly because they don't have the belief in themselves, the belief in the system, 
and they don't believe in the importance of money management. Successful traders need to start with a lot of positive affirmations and self-development. Changing your thinking will be the most important thing to change your trading. The method and indicators, the system, the trends, the charts, they not the holy grail. The truth is not where you think it is. It is your thinking. So while we've been speaking about having confidence and a positive belief system, the other side of the coin is that often we tend to overestimate our abilities. Have you ever heard of the late Wabagon, Lake Wabagon effect? Quite interesting because it comes from a radio show in the U US United States that concluded each day with the words, all women are strong, all children are smart, and all men are good looking. Essentially it highlights a cognitive bias. Most women believe they're strong, and most children think they're smart, and statistically around 93% of men believe that they're good looking. When surveyed, 90% of people consider themselves to be better drivers than average. However, statistically, we know it's impossible for that to be true. So, humans are naturally optimistic. The amateur trader often acts instinctively. Unfortunately, this instinctive behavior, along with the natural optimism, is often the undoing of the amateur trader. When a person enters a trade, he does so with the hope that it's going to be a winner. He's naturally optimistic. When the position goes against him, he keeps thinking, or hoping rather, that it'll come back. So we often overestimate our own abilities and we underestimate the importance of managing our money and sticking to the rules or the method of trading. Successful trading takes confidence, yes, but humility too. It's not a contradiction. It's all about having confidence in the methods and then submitting to the methods. It is essential to understand the probability of a losing streak because losses happen. Sometimes they happen in succession. Even with a system with a win rate of 90%, there's a mathematical probability that she could have five losing trades in a row. Imagine that. We claim a 70% success rate with a swing 1-2-3 system, but there's still a mathematical probability that you can have nine losing trades in a row. It's not just a matter of if, but when. Maybe it's after 1,000 trades or 10,000 trades, or maybe it's only after 100. Do you have the mindset to still continue with trade number 10, if you've just endured nine losses one after another, you cannot control the movement of markets. You can't even control your profits. What you can control are your losses. So the good trades will take care of themselves, but you need the mindset to manage bad trades. Not to be overconfident, but to practice stop losses. Don't sit in a bad trade. Bad trades like a rotting fish. The longer you sit with it, the more it stinks. Your job as a trader is to move quickly in managing your losses. If you can't do that well, then you shouldn't trade. Regardless of how good the method is, regardless of your years of experience, you will have losing streaks. Do you have the mindset to limit those losses and then to get back in and trade some more? Trade so that a loss doesn't hurt you financially, emotionally, and most important, psychologically. I don't lay awake at night worrying about the trades that didn't work. Most of them cost me 2% of my portfolio, but I probably made 2% that day too. So trading is about having a positive expectancy. If you follow the trend with me, you will make money. So we all want fantastic returns. But are you prepared to go through the pain to get there? Things will not always go according to the plan. So get over it and get on with it. So your mindset is a sort of a qualitative aspect of trading. The next lesson we're going to look at, we'll look at money management. Thereafter, almost all the lessons deal with the method of trading, mostly quantitative aspects of trading. But although the mindset is one of the most important aspects of trading, it is also the most difficult to teach. It's often something that's developed over time. If you enjoyed this lesson, please sign on as a subscriber. You'll receive a login, which will give you access to all 10 lessons.